Welcome to St. Dunstan's on this very special day, the day of Pentecost. This is the day we bring out the red and celebrate and give thanks for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Everything, as you know, these days is subject to change, but for now, we're gonna continue these services with some adjustments and additions along the way. But please remember that we continue in the world to make Eucharist and celebrate Eucharist and share Eucharist with others by the way we live. And I'll be sharing some examples in the sermon in just a moment. Come join us for our third uh, virtual Zoom coffee hour or half hour this Sunday, 11 or 10.30 a.m. And I thought we would begin this week by creating some of the chaos of Pentecost by having everyone not on mute. And I'll have a surprise there to show you how we can recreate that special moment of of chaos and speaking in tongues and all that. And then we'll continue by having a time to share perhaps what fruits of the Spirit do you need most in your life or what fruits of the Spirit are you most thankful for during this time. St. Dunstan's is continuing to support the children and teachers at their adopted school in Haiti, St. Andres. And I want to share with you as part of the spring fundraiser this note from Betty Casson. Betty writes, one meal a day. That's what many of our students at St. Andre's in Haiti get. And that one is usually at school. Now St. Andre's school is closed because of COVID-19. Our wonderful priest at St. Andre's, Father Noe, can't let the children go hungry. He gets in his truck and searches out food throughout the country. Then the cooks at St. Andre's cook it and pack it into 600 containers for school families to pick up Monday through Friday. That food is feeding many hungry mouths at home as well. Food is harder to find and more expensive in Haiti right now, so your donations mean more than ever. We need to raise $5,000 a month just to keep our children fed. Please help keep their bellies full. And I brought my check today and We'll be giving it to Lewis in a moment, uh, and you all received that newsletter, I know, in the mail, so just want to commend that to you during this spring fundraiser um, from the wonderful Haiti ministry that's supported by St. Uh, Dunstan's. I also want to invite you again to subscribe, if you aren't already, uh, to our parish e-news by going to our website, stdcv.org, which includes information about many other ministries and activities going on in this parish. And of course, thank you again for sending in your pledges and offerings or making them online if that's more convenient. Happy birthday, happy anniversary, and happy graduation to all who are celebrating those milestones this week. And now as we prepare for worship for this great feast day, it's, it's one of our seven principal feasts. I want to offer this prayer to help us focus on this great gift that we're about to receive. And you know, in our hymnal, we have 24 hymns that have to do with the Holy Spirit or Pentecost. And I just want to read two verses of one of them. So let us pray. Breathe on me, breath of God. 
fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on me, breath of God, till I am wholly thine, till all this earthly part of me glows with thy fire divine. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day, you open the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and the, a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own native language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last day, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, flood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. A portion of Psalm 104. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face and they are terrified. You take away their breath and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. 
May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. A reading from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in every one. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the works of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. And to another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, 
and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. But of course, we are not all together in this place on Robinson Road. We are not even watching this taped service from this place on Robinson Road at the same time. But those realities do not diminish for a moment the gift and the power of the Holy Spirit we celebrate today and the responsibility and the opportunity it gives us to continue being witnesses for Christ, to continue being on the front lines as essential workers keeping the supply chain of good news going strong in a world of daily changing news that still stretches us, pulls us from day to day between hope and concern. Let me first suggest what this day of Pentecost is not about. There was a back and forth cheer at my high school football games that went like this. Anaheim High would begin by shouting, we've got the spirit, yes we do. We've got the spirit, how about you? And then the other side of the stadium would shout back a little louder, we've got spirit, yes we do. We've got spirit, how about you? And this went on and on, the idea being that each side would try to outdo the other, the volume and the enthusiasm rising each time. And this was before the game even started. But as Anaheim High, did I mention that's my school, Anaheim, as Anaheim High pulled further and further ahead, quarter by quarter, we had a really good team. The response from the other side of the field to our cheer, we've got spirit, yes we do, we've got spirit, how about you? Well, it gradually decreased in volume and passion like a, the air escaping from a balloon. And so you'd start hearing them say, we've got spirit, yes we do, we've got spirit, how about you? There's a diagram that illustrates a trend line after disasters hit. Often people initially respond with great courage and heroic resolve. But as reality sets in with the knowledge 
that recovery will be long and hard. The once climbing higher curve drops down to a deep valley of discouragement and disillusionment. It gradually climbs up again to recovery and new life. But the point made when I was hearing this presentation is that at times just like this, and unlike a tornado or a hurricane that just comes but then leaves, but at times like this during an ongoing crisis, when there is so much uncertainty and so many mixed messages and worst of all division being sowed by so many people, starting at the top, it takes a lot longer to make that slow climb back up together. And so, in the meantime, of course, we do all we can to help lift each other's and our own spirits. We reach out to each other. We listen to favorite music and songs. We take walks. We send and receive funny pictures and memes and videos. Family, friends and music and nature and laughter and warmer weather helps lift our spirits. And that is good and that is important and that is urgent and vital as we take care of ourselves and each other. But today, we celebrate a different kind of spirit for a different reason, equally urgent and equally vital right now. It has nothing to do with, is not dependent on whether your team is winning or losing, whether you are in a good mood or not. Yes, the Holy Spirit has many helping names, you know, comforter, counselor, advocate, paraclete, who is that word literally, mean, literally means, comes alongside us. Yes, the Spirit produces the fruits of love and joy and peace, patience, kindness and generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And yes, the Spirit enables a variety of ways to serve and do ministry, as we heard in our lesson just a moment ago. But what I want to focus on this morning is the Holy Spirit which came to equip us for ministry. Remember at his ascension, Jesus told his apostles, stay here until you are clothed with the power from on high. And then he says later, you will be my witnesses from Jerusalem and to the ends of the earth. Today we celebrate the Spirit that equips us for ministry. And if you want to know what that equipping did, just read the rest of the book of Acts. Just read that book and you will see what that Spirit did, how it equipped those once frightened and confused and wandering apostles into missionaries, disciples, turning the world upside down. As I lead the baptismal covenant in a moment, listen to those five familiar questions with fresh ears. For example, will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and the prayers? I used to say to my confirmation class, what that question is really saying is, will you keep coming to church? But just as that fourfold description of the early church recorded in Acts 2.42 was a very different church than the one we knew, you know, remember way back in March of 2020? So we can still be the church right now in a new way. A wonderful prayer I saw recently reminds us of the different ways we can still even celebrate what we used to celebrate here on Sundays. For example, we can still pass the peace whenever we look that cashier in the eye, our eyes, our masks on, when we look at that cashier with eyes of love and thankfulness, we're passing the peace for anyone we're walking by as we take a hike. We can allow every meal, every meal to be communion by no longer taking it for granted, but being mindful and thankful for our daily food, 
taking time to really see and smell and taste and savor each bite. That's our communion for now. Or consider these questions. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? And will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Can you hear those questions in a fresh way right now? How can we not think of these familiar words in new ways as we make choices and make sacrifices, as we follow guidelines patiently, as we make staying in touch with others a new priority, as we remember the needy, including those served through ministries like the Haiti Ministry and Nancy's Project and I Help and all the rest. And how can we not but think right now when we ask those questions about the most vulnerable in this country and their access to health care? How can we not think about those issues in a new way? Or all those who have lost their jobs in an economy that was already changing, was already challenging for them. Oh, how I miss, you don't know how I miss and I know you do, being together on Pentecost in a full church, singing all those great hymns. Oh, how I'm gonna miss that. But as I said in the beginning, being apart for now does not diminish at all the gift and the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Because of this gift, as that old CalFed slogan, that Bank River CalFed said, we have more power than we think. The slogan was, you have more power than you think. I actually took that big poster from my local bank and said, can I borrow this for my Pentecost sermon? They said, sure, looking at me a little odd, but I held that up every Pentecost. You have more power than you think. We have more power than we think. The Holy Spirit is our secret weapon as we continue to stand with other essential workers on the front lines, keeping things moving. And what I mean by that is keeping the good news spreading, infecting the world. In Acts, we see how it turned the world upside down. And now we're living in a world that feels like to me that is being rearranged, big time. Maybe God is doing a new thing, as scripture tells us. Maybe there were some needed course corrections which are being speeded up a bit more now. Maybe, and while acknowledging the deep pain and anxiety too many people are going through right now, maybe we will, maybe we are finding new blessings to enjoy and share with all people, with everyone. For as we prayed, in the Collect of the Day, quote, shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel that it may reach to the ends of the earth. Gospel, good news, good news which has the last word, and that last word is God's word, and it's stronger than any virus, and it's stronger than anything that would try to divide us. And so let us close in prayer. O Holy Spirit, who on the day of Pentecost put fire in the lives of the early disciples, set us aflame to show forth the risen Christ, that we might not fear, but imagine and dream and plan for becoming a new church, that we might not fight but join in the transformation of a world that is more just and fair than it was before. That our sense of community and neighbor might be broadened as we share each other's sorrows and joys. Holy Spirit, renew us. Holy Spirit, inspire us. Holy Spirit, inflame us. Holy Spirit, empower us. Holy Spirit, unite us. Holy Spirit, support us. Holy Spirit, strengthen us. Holy Spirit, guide us. Holy Spirit, possess us. 
and remain with us always. Amen. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. Let us pray. In power of the Spirit who aids us in our weakness and teaches us to pray, let us offer to God our intercessions, thanksgivings, and the deepest yearnings of our hearts, saying, Come, Holy Spirit. For the Church, for Michael, Lucinda, and all bishops, clergy, and people of God, that they may be made whole and free by the Spirit, and bear witness in every aspect of life to the full power of Christ's resurrection, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. For our world, especially during this pandemic, that those who lead nations and states and cities and all who make public policy will recognize we are all in this together so that we might work as partners for the common good, we pray, come Holy Spirit. For those weighed down by fear or despair, for those suffering or burdened by illness, for those who are out of work and are anxious for their family's future, for those still working in difficult circumstances to keep us safe and fed, that they would know and feel God's encouragement and strength. We pray, come Holy Spirit. For those who have died and for all who witness to us of God's love poured into our hearts by the Spirit and for the grace to be faithful to all they have been for us, we pray, come Holy Spirit. Let us take a moment to draw to mind and heart the people in situations we want to pray for and the thanksgivings we want to offer. Gracious God, receive our prayers. 
Hear our hearts' deep yearnings yet to be formed into words. Give us the courage to yield ourselves, all that we are and have yet to become, to the transforming motion of your Holy Spirit on this day of Pentecost. Through Jesus Christ, risen and living, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also always with you. As our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus said, 
Abide in me as I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer your praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. God who enlightened the minds of the disciples by pouring out upon them the Holy Spirit, make you rich with his blessing, that you may abound more and more in that spirit forever. Amen. Amen. May God who sent the Holy Spirit as a flame of fire that rested upon the heads of the disciples, burn out all evil from your hearts and make them shine with the pure light of his presence. Amen. May God, who by the, your, by the Holy Spirit caused those of many tongues to proclaim Jesus as Lord, strengthen your faith and send you out to bear witness to him in word and deed. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.
let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Let our God's senses prepare.